session today, this service, as we move into our hands, Father, 
Thank you. Your peace will prevail. The peace of God that passes every human understanding. Father, in the name of Jesus. Precious and holy name of Jesus. I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone because I know. Yes, I know he holds. My future and life is worth living just because you live. Because I know. Yes, I know he holds my future, and life is worth living for, because he Another glorious, dignified, victorious service undertaken by the Pine Town Friendly Service. Dear Brother Brandon and Tim. Thank you to also Brother Alistair and Greg Ali. Functions for the deco and the setup and the others. And, uh, Done a dignified funeral service set up today on the system. I'd like for you to pray for the family. Beloved, we would definitely eat to the rules of COVID. All protocols observed. There are sanitizers and masks available if you don't have. Uh, please sanitize your hand and keep your mask on. As the body lying in state now. We thank you so much. What a beautiful setup today. What a, a glorious setup. A send off for our dear brother Samuel. We appreciate you, brother Brandon and Sanchan Funeral Service. For a send off foot for a king, and he is a king. We salute him today. Thank you for going the extra mile with beautiful cars, luxurious cars, and a glorious send off. Anton always does an excellent service, we appreciate them. And thank you once again. Thank you, uh, Alistair and the team, for set up, setting up a deco, this lovely tent, clouds, and everything arranged. I really requested for me to sing this song. On behalf of myself, Mark John, Brian John, and Derek John this year, we want to say a lot of sympathies and prayers for the family. Sing the song on behalf of you, our dear family.
family. to pray. I'm going to hand over to Pastor Madhuri. Um, we thank you so much as you will stand wherever you are. Thank you, Pastor. Good morning, friends. I greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Can we just bow our hearts to pray today as we've come together to pay our final respects to a child of the living God today. And we come to stand with family in solidarity and in support as they mourn the loss, the passing of their dear, dear loved one. We lift up our hands and let's invoke the blessing the presence of Almighty God over our time here. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. We come to you, Lord, with every heart, hearts that mourn. But also, Lord, we come with a sense of rejoicing. We come with a sense of victory. 
Because we know that as we gather here in Jesus' name, we know, Lord, that death has not won the battle. We know today, Father, that death has lost its sting and the grave has lost its victory. For those who die in the Lord Jesus Christ, your word teaches us, are passed from death to everlasting life. Today, Lord, we come with thanksgiving in our hearts that, Lord, you have blessed this world, you have blessed this family, you have blessed our community with this child of God. And Father, in your wise plan and in your providence, you have seen it fit to call him to glory. Our prayer today, Father, is that you will bless and strengthen and comfort Sister Yvonne. You will have your hands upon the children, upon Brenton, Silverstone, Karosha, and their respective families, O oh God. We pray, Lord, for all the extended members of family, this community, Father. We pray, Lord, that we will feel the mighty comforting hand of the precious Holy Spirit. And Lord, that in our coming today, we will be reminded that, Lord, even death has been taken care of on the cross of Calvary. So, Lord, in the midst of grief and in the midst of mourning, we pray, Lord, that we will lift up our hands to heaven. And, Lord, together with one collective voice here today, we will say that the Lord has given and the Lord has taken away. And still we will see, we will say, blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, we know that our parting is only temporary. For there is coming a day, according to your word, where we will see our loved ones again. When the trumpet sound will be heard, the voice of the archangel will be sounded, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Until then, Father, keep us looking unto Jesus. Now, bless this funeral service. Bless all that will be done and all that will be said. Let, Father, even in this gathering, your name be uplifted, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, thank you. You can take your seats if you have a seat. Let me warmly welcome you to the funeral service of our dear brother Salva today. It really is a, a privilege to have you with us. As we start today, I want to just please caution us and remind us to keep all of the COVID protocols in place. Please keep the social distancing. We'd like for you to please have your mask on, keep your hands sanitized. And we're not going to be allowing any social uh, touching, uh, communication if we can, please. And I think that we can um, do that and honor the regulations that are placed over us for our own good. Um, the Bible is very, very clear that this life that we have here on earth is only temporary. In fact, the Bible tells us in the book of Peter, 1 Peter, that we are sojourners, we are pilgrims that are passing through this earth on our way to our eternal destination. What we've come here today to do is we've come to celebrate the moment of the graduation of this dear brother into the next level of his journey in the presence of Almighty God. Our prayers and our thoughts are with Sister Yvonne today and with the children and the grandchildren, the rest of the family, we know that God's peace is going to rest upon them. We're going to open the casket right now, friends, and we're going to ask you to come in a very, very orderly fashion. If we can come, those of you that are coming to view, please, we keep our social distancing. Can please come down this red carpet on this side. You can pay your respects even to family. We can ask that you please refrain from touching. If you can do that, please. But your presence here means so much to them. You're welcome to do that. And thereafter, uh, we'll continue with the funeral service. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You're welcome now to come and be here. So much for the review. And so we gave only the second. As you heard, you could come through. You heard the announcements. We appreciate you. Oh, Daddy! No, Dad! No, 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 no! Daddy, why? Why? That's all, Dad. Why? Oh, Dad! You kidding me? Let's get down, 
Instructions. I know this is a difficult time for everyone, especially family, but your presence here and your compliance really goes a long way in relieving the load that they carry. I'm going to ask you to stand once again, and we're going to start this funeral service. Uh, we're going to get ready to read the obituary of Brother Salva today, and then we're going to be led in prayer. 
uh, Pastor Nick Badiachi. So he's one of our pastors as at, at Seder Ministries International. He's going to come now, he's going to read the obituary and then lead us to God in prayer and pray the blessing of God over this funeral service. Let's bow to pray as Pastor Nick comes to read the obituary and lead us to God in prayer. Thank you, Jesus. One life, amen, live it. Honoring the life of Selva Nagarun was born on the 29th of April, 1967 to Munsami Sam and Parvati Nagarun. Selva grew up in Tilly Manor. He graduated from Belvedere. Two beautiful children, Selveston and Karusha, he doted on his grandson, Malachi. He worked and finally became an established businessman. He was humble and loved helping the unfortunate. Selva leaves a legacy of Christ for his descendants to follow. He will sadly be missed by his loving wife, Yvonne, his children, Sylvester and Karusha, his brothers, sisters, brother-in-laws, sister-in-laws, and a whole host of family and friends. He is resting in the loving arms of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Till we meet again. Shall we bow to prayer? Heavenly Father, we come to you once again this hour in and through your precious Son, Jesus Christ. And Father, we thank you, Lord, for the blessed hope and the assurance that we have today that those that die in you, Lord, will live eternally in your glory. And Father, we thank you, Lord, for the mansion that you have prepared for Selva. Thank you, Lord, for the place that you have designed for him, Lord, and you have found it fit to call him home, Lord. And Father, Lord, we know that family will miss dad dearly, Father. They will miss his presence, Lord. They will miss his love and care. But in the midst of all, Father, ask today, Lord, that your peace and comfort will rest upon them. Let them know, Lord, that they are not alone, Father that you are their God, you are their helper, Lord. You are the one that will fill in every void they may encounter. And Father, we, Lord, we thank you once again for this hour. Like your word is de declared this hour, Lord. Blessed are those that mourn, for they shall be comforted. And Lord, we thank you that you are truly the way, the truth, and the life. And this morning we know that in and through the service, Lord, we thank you that salvation will flow, Father. Through the life and legacy of your son, Selva, today, that somebody will come to know you as Jesus Christ. The way that you have prepared for Selva is the way that will, that will lead us, Lord, into a place called paradise. Be with us now, we pray. Thank you for the tributes and thank you for your word this afternoon. Thank you for everyone that's gathered around, Lord, just to pay the respect that your presence take preeminence, we pray. Amen and amen. And amen. Whilst you're standing, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to take your program sheets and we're going to sing just one verse in the chorus of a great, great song that must bring some clarity and perspective to why we've come here today. When we come to a funeral service, our hearts are heavy. Uh, it is always a time of introspection. It is always a time, a time of remembrance. It's always a time when we look back. We look back with thanksgiving to the Lord. It's also a time where we have to contemplate the future. And when we think about our future, especially for family, I want them to know that what we look forward to in the Lord Jesus Christ is spoken about in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse number 16. It says this about our future. The Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God. At that time, the dead in Christ shall rise first. That means family, friends, Salva is going to be amongst those people. Then we who are alive and remain, the Bible teaches, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. That means there's going to be a reunion. This is not the end of the story, ladies and gentlemen. This is just a comma in the sentence. We look forward, according to the word of the Lord, to a great reunion where we will see our loved ones again. And thus shall we always be together with the Lord. The hymn says the exact same thing. There's a land that is fairer than they. And by faith we can see it afar. For the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there. 
I think this is what we can all sing in thanksgiving to the Lord in honor of Brother Salva. In the sweet by and by, we'll meet on that beautiful shore. Let's sing of this assurance this morning. <laughs> sing that as our farewell to him. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. Those who believe that said, Amen. 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 Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You may take your seats. Our praise, our sympathies, and our deep condolences today on behalf of all the community that is here, on behalf of family who may not be present here today, on behalf of our church family at the Seder Ministries International. Uh, we pass that to Yvonne today especially. We wanted to know that we're standing with her right now. We are praying the support, strength, and comfort of the Holy Spirit that we know all too well has the ability, only has the ability to comfort us during a time like this. And to the children and their respective families as well, we want them to know that we are praying with them, for them, standing with them. And as they bear this loss today, I want them to know that it is a loss only here through our estimation, but really it is heaven's gain. Your father, your husband, has run his race to completion in the providence of God. He has completed his course. He has kept the faith. Today, in the authority of God's word, he's alive in the presence of Almighty God. We're going to have a tribute right now, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to call one of the members of family. Festa is here. And she's going to come, and on behalf of family, she's going to say a few words. Thank you. of our precious Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. On behalf of the Nagoran family, I'd just like to express their gratitude. Thank everyone for coming. And on behalf of Malachi, I'd like to say, Dear Puppy, you was a friend, father, and grandfather to me. Thank you for looking after me from the day I was born. Thank you for your endless love and always treating me like a king. Thank you for always putting me first and really reminding me daily that I was the best thing that ever happened to you. Nobody would ever be able to love me like you do. I now have a life to live without you. I no, no, I no longer have anyone to do my life with, but I love you, puppy. I love you, puppies, puppy. You will always be my number one. On behalf of Kurosha, to the man that has my heart forever. A part of me is so angry and hurt. I'm unable to come to terms with the fact that you left. But I also know you work so hard to give us the finer things life has to offer, and you needed a break. This past six years at home with you has made us so close. I never got the chance to tell you bye. I never got the chance to make you proud. But I got the chance to make you the happiest man on this planet by giving you Malachi. Thank you, Dad, for being the best thing that, ever that I ever had in my life. Your loss is going to make the worst impact on me. I love you, Dad. On behalf of Auntie Yvonne, a humble man of great stature, you thrived and excelled in all your accomplishments. Your family was your pride and joy. You turned everything you touched to gold, a role model like no other. Your compassion to reach out to anyone in, in need was immeasurable. 
a smile that we will never forget. Thank you for being my partner, my go-to person for 32 years. I never felt like an orphan as long as I had you. You are my everything. I will love and honor you till we meet again. Rest safely in the arms of Jesus. On behalf of Sylvester, I cherish the memories I have with my father, and I know he's smiling down at all of us. Thank you again for coming out today to celebrate the memory the memory of my amazing father. He was my role model and my superhero. I feel so grateful to have had as much time as um, I feel so grateful to have had as much time with my father as I did. I miss him so much already and I will forever remember having the most incredible dad. I don't know how long it will take me to believe this tremendous loss. My father was the most important person in my life and I feel so heartbroken to no longer have him here with us. His memory will forever carry on. I love you, Dad, and I will continue to walk in your footsteps. Thank you. Thank you, Shrestha, for all of those beautiful sentiments you've expressed from the hearts of family uh, here today, expressing their thanksgiving to the Lord for the great gift that we've enjoyed in the person of Brother Salva. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to just pay careful attention to this announcement. Uh, we're going to be here for the next 15, 20 minutes. We're going to hear the word of the Lord. After that has happened, I'm going to allow for those who have not had the opportunity of coming and paying their respects to come over to the front and do that. As soon as that is done, I'm going to ask us if we can please clear the tent. Um, we can just stand on the sides outside uh, and for the last 10 or 15 minutes that we're here, we're going to allow uh, uh, Sister Yvonne to spend some time here paying her last respects as well. Of course, you know with all of the protocols, that the restrictions placed upon us with this COVID-19 virus, we have to do uh, that in order so that we ensure everyone's safety. So I pray that you will comply with those instructions. I want to draw our attention to the word of the Lord. And as we come here today, friends, our hearts are heavy. I understand that. I know that, but there are words that come from the living God that is able to overshadow and able to bring accurate perspective to us at this specific moment. I'm going to read a portion of scripture from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and I want you all to hear carefully what God says to us, and when we hear what God says to us, uh, His word is able to change our lives. His word is able to change our perspectives and to bring understanding to this moment in our lives. Here's what the Bible says, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. For we know, not we guess, or we think, or we assume. The Bible says, for we know that if our earthly house, this tent, uh, pretty much like this tent we are standing under right now, we know that if this earthly house, this tent, is talking about our bodies, if this tent is destroyed, that means if death comes, we still have a building from God, a house that is not made with hands, a house that is eternal in the heavens. Just one line. Yvonne, I want you to hear the word of the Lord today. The Bible says, he's telling us that this tent that we all live in, the body that we all possess, is going to fail. It's going to be destroyed. And nobody knows when. Nobody knows the exact moment. God knows. The Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die. We know that from the time we are born, ladies and gentlemen, we all have an appointment with death. Brother Sava loved his home, loved his family with all his heart like you've heard here today. But he had his appointment with death the other day. It is a truth. And I think every one of us here today in this community, no matter what your religious persuasion is, no matter what your philosophical belief is, no matter what your understanding is, we all have to agree that death is certain. Death is a surety, it's a certainty. We all are going to have to face that at some stage. The other thing every one of us, death forces us to understand and to realize and to agree with is that life is short. Life is not as long as we think it is, ladies and gentlemen. And I want to make an urgent appeal to everyone listening to me today. 
Don't live life thinking that life is forever here on this earth. Pick up the phone whilst you have the chance. Make the call whilst you have the chance. Have the conversation whilst you have the breath. Give the flowers whilst the person who is the recipient is alive to smell the flowers. Do what you need to do. Ask for forgiveness whilst you have the time. Make that journey whilst you can. Do what you need to do because ladies and gentlemen, when we come to a funeral service like this, the truth is we must all agree that life is short. It's not as long as we think it is. Sometimes, I think we all think, especially when we're in our teenagers, we think that life is forever. We've got forever to live. But life really is short. Life is short and it's true. When you ask members of this family today, who have experienced the passing away of their father, their husband, you'll ask them, they'll tell you without any blinking of their eye, yes, life is too short. But hear the word of the Lord. The word, even if this tent is destroyed, we still have a building from God. Karosha, I want you to hear the word of the Lord today. Your father is not in this casket. Friends and Silverstone, your father is not in this casket. Yvonne, your father is not in this casket. What is in this casket is only the tent. Is only the outer covering. He is still alive in the presence of God. That is what the word of the Lord says to us. We have a building made by the hands of God. And I want you to be encouraged today to know this. This building that God makes for us, it's eternal in the heavens. It's not touched by the hands of any human being. Listen, sickness can never come near that body again. Disease will never come near. In fact, death cannot enter that location where Father is right now. Is in the presence of Almighty God when he closed his eyes here for the last time the other day when he breathed his precious and final breath here on this earth he opened his eyes to take his abode in this place that is eternal in the heavens and I want to encourage you all today we no longer have to pray for brother Salva we no longer have to pray healing upon him God has already healed him He's taken his abode. But we have to pray for ourselves, ladies and gentlemen. We have to worry about ourselves because here we are still on this earth. The Lord Jesus Christ was talking to his disciples in John chapter 14. And he was telling them, I'm about to be taken away from you. You know that. I'm going to go to the cross in a few days from now. Jesus says, uh, the day is coming where you have to contemplate life without me. Pretty much like we've had to do with Brother Salva. But here's Jesus' statement concerning his own death that he makes to his disciples, his loved ones. And here's the statement of God to you, Yvonne, the statement of God to you, Karosha, to Silverstone, to Trenton, to the rest of your family, the grandchildren, and so forth. Here's the statement. Jesus Christ says, let not your heart be troubled even when you're thinking about death. Why? Because in, he said, in my Father's house, there are many mansions. I'm going to prepare that place for you so that where I am, you will be also. And if I go, be sure, Jesus says, I'm coming to receive you unto myself so we will be there forever and ever. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me today. Thomas asked the Lord a question that day. He says, Lord, we hear you talking about this place where there are mansions. We hear you talking about this place where there is a, the tent is destroyed and we have a building now that's made with the hands of God eternally in the heavens. Thomas says, God, we don't know where that place is. How can we possibly get there? Friends, it is the same question that is in your heart right now. It is the same question that is in the heart of every human being from the beginning of time. Every human being has this question burned and imprinted in their heart. God, where are you? How can we possibly get to you? The reason man has this question is because we understand that we are all not holy, righteous people. I know, family, you won't mind me saying this today. We didn't come to pay tribute to a perfect man today. No. In fact, none of us are, ladies and gentlemen. If we ask for those amongst us who are imperfect, I will be the one who put my hand up first. Yeah. The Bible says all of us have sinned. 
We've fallen short of the glory of God. The reason we all ask this question, God, where are you? How can we get to you? What is the way to get to you? It's because there's a realization in all of our hearts that we have all failed. We've all sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. And we long to be back in God's presence. We long to be in the presence of our Creator. That's why, ladies and gentlemen, with all the respect in my heart, I say to you that man has tried every way possible. We've concocted things. We've made up stuff. We've tried religion. We've tried money. We've tried status, popularity. We've tried driving the nicest of cars or having a lot of money in our bank accounts. We've tried living in the fanciest of houses. We've tried all of these things for what? To answer the question in our hearts, God, where are you? How can we get to you? Thomas asked Jesus the same question that day. We don't know where you are going. How can we get to you? You may be listening to me at this funeral service today. You may be asking the question as well, God, is charity the way to get to you? Is good works the way to get to you? Is following a code of do's and don'ts, is that it? I don't want to disappoint you here today, but let me tell you the truth. None of that can get us into the presence of God because we are all guilty of sin. So Thomas asked the question, we're all asking the question today. Jesus answers that question over 2,000 years ago, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus still answers that question here today. I pray he will answer the question in your hearts, every one of you. Where are you, God? How can we get to you? Jesus answered Thomas and he answers today. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. Nobody comes to God except through me. What Jesus Christ was saying, friends, is this. I'm going to the cross to prepare a place for you. How is going to the cross going to prepare a place for us to be with God? Because we sinners. You see, when he bled and died on that cross down from Calvary's mountain, the Son of God, perfect, spotless, without blemish, was the only one qualified to pay for our sins. That thing that separated us from God. And so when he died and he looked up to heaven, just before he died, he said, it is finished. Jesus Christ was saying the price for the sins of all of humanity, past, present, and future, is now paid for in full. You know what must bring us great comfort here today? It's not the tent, it's not the decor, it's not the flowers. You know what must comfort us here today? It's when Jesus said, it is finished. He was saying to Brother Salva, your sins have been paid for. What separated you from God has been cancelled. I made a way for you to be in my presence forever and for all of eternity in this house that is made by the hands of God. When Jesus said, it is finished, he opened the door. So that Salva could walk into the glory, the presence of God. What about you today? Thomas got his answer. I am the way, the truth, and the life, said Jesus. I know that Brother Salva got his answer. Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. But what about you and I today? Let me sum everything up by saying this to you. All the crying, all the shouting, all the warm words of tribute cannot guarantee the reunion in the presence of God with our brother Saba. No, it can't. The only thing is this. God is going to ask us, what was your relationship with my son Jesus Christ? I'll sum up everything I'm saying on this victorious funeral service by saying this to you today. God so loved you and I that he gave his only begotten son Jesus that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish when death comes, but will be passed to everlasting, eternal life. Here's what we say on this funeral service today to everyone gathered here today. Know Jesus Christ and know everlasting, eternal life. Shall we bow to pray? Father, we thank you today. That on this funeral service we can understand that death has only lost its sting and the grave has only lost its victory because of the finished work on the cross of Calvary. When the blood of Jesus ran down Mount Golgotha that day, the price of our sins, the thing that brings eternal death 
was taken care of once and for all. Today we can have life and have life more abundantly in and through Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that your son Salva heard the gospel. Thank you, Lord, that he was exposed to the message of hope in Jesus Christ. Our prayer today is no longer for him, O oh God, for his race is complete. Our prayer, Lord, is for every one of us, every family member here today, every neighbor, every community member, every precious person gathered here today. We pray, Lord, that through the means of this funeral service, O oh God, that they too will know Jesus. They too, Lord, will have their sins forgiven. They too, Lord, will no longer be separated from God. And they too, Lord, will be the recipients of everlasting eternal life. Let your word find an abiding place this morning. Now, Father, we pray for family that you will guide them and strengthen them. We pray, Lord, that the comforting hand of the Holy Spirit will be their portion. That, Father, like your word declares, you will be the father to the fatherless. Our Lord, you will be close to the widow, God. That you will bless, protect, and comfort, unite like never before. Provide for them, we pray, O oh God. And let the presence of God never depart from their home. So, Father, we pray strength upon them now. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Friends, we're going to open the casket one last time. If you've not had an opportunity of paying your respects, we're going to ask you to please come now. If you can do that in an orderly fashion down this red carpet, if you can do that, and then in a circular manner, you can leave through that side uh, without touching anyone. Please keep our social distancing protocols. Thereafter, we will come to a closure and I'm going to dismiss us. But if you've not had the opportunity, I'm going to call you now to come forward. God bless you. standing on the outside, I want you to keep her in prayer. I want you to keep family in prayer. We're going to pray the prayer of comfort. We're going to pray the prayer of strength over them. The prayer of support. The prayer of God's grace over them. Thank you ladies and gentlemen for your compliance. As soon as that is done, we'll get ready to release the dance and then we'll be dismissed on behalf of family. Thank you all for being here today. Thank you for your support and your strength and I want to encourage you to continue to do that continue to be here for family and be their strength and their support during this time.
raise your hands towards Yvonne, towards the children, towards the grandchildren. We're going to pray today the prayer of faith, the prayer of comfort and strength. And as we do that today, I know that they're going to feel the presence of God's Holy Spirit here. Let's bow to pray. Almighty God, our loving Heavenly Father, we look to you, O God, from whence cometh our help. Your word declares, Father, that you are a refuge and a very present help in time of trouble. Father, as we raise our hands towards Yvonne today, as we raise our hands towards Trenton, Kenosha, and Silverstone today, and their home, their respective families, their grandchildren. Father, we raise our hands to extended members of the family today. We are praying, O oh God, that the comforting hand of the Holy Spirit will become real. We are praying, Lord, that you will lift them up and, Lord, you will surround them, envelop them, O oh God. Let them feel the love of a heavenly Father like never before. In the days and in the weeks, months, years to come, O oh God, let them be thankful that the memory, Lord, of their loved one is blessed in the sight of God. And then, Lord, I pray today that they will also run this race looking unto Jesus, the author, the finisher of their faith. I pray, Heavenly Father, 
that the song of their hearts moving forward in honor of their patriarch, in honor of their father, O oh God, will be. Let us now labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. And then when all of life is over and our work here on earth is done, when that role that is called up yonder, we will be there as well. We pray grace today. We pray strength today. We pray wisdom, knowledge, and understanding from heaven. We pray greater unity amongst family, O oh God, like never before. And most importantly, Lord, let your presence be revered in their home. Give them strength that comes from heaven, we ask. Thank you, Lord, for all those who have gathered here today to pay their respects, to stand in solidarity with family. We pray your mighty hand upon them as well. Now, Lord, we leave from here, and as we make our way to the crematorium, to, Lord, lay to rest the mortal remains of your son, journey with us, and keep going with us along life's journey. For we understand today, Father, that it is only until that day when we will see our loved ones again, we pray, O oh God, that you will be with us. Now, may the love of God, our Heavenly Father, the grace of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the sweet fellowship and the communion, the precious Holy Spirit, rest in the mind with each and every one of us today and always. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Friends, we're now going to release doubts in honor of the life and the legacy. The servant of God, the Son of God, who has opened his eyes in glory, has passed from this land to the next. And we pray that his memory will always be blessed to every one of us. Friends, thank you once again to every one of you on the Alpha family for being here. Your solidarity, support and strength it really means a lot to family and we ask you to continue to do that. Family is also requested since there will be a limited number of people at the crematorium. They've asked that you please stay here and under the tent just behind you. There's a takeaway refreshment that family has graciously provided for you. And it will be their delight, their privilege, their honor to have you partake of it and join in this time of thanksgiving to the Lord and in the memory of our dear brother Salva. May the Lord bless and keep and comfort and strengthen every one of you in his precious name. Amen. All brothers will now get ready as we prepare to leave from this venue to the bedroom from the top. What a glorious send off. Father the Son, King. When you sleep for the master, from the dawn to set you see. Let's talk of all his wonders, love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the role is called a pure I'll be there. As a backup to play.
Open your back, boy. Yes, sir. 